Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for time. Today, I'd like to embark on a new discussion, which is signal representation. Today, I'm going to share with you how we can describe a signal with an equation or in time domain or in frequency domain. Besides these three ways to describe a signal, basically we can also use constellation diagram to describe a signal. We can also use an eye diagram to describe a signal. But for this video, I'm going to concentrate how we can describe a signal by an equation in time domain or in frequency domain. This is the first series discussion on signal representation. Okay, so therefore, look up for more discussion on signal representation at this channel. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Thank you so much. This is what I have described to you guys earlier on. A signal can be represented by either an equation in time domain or frequency domain. Okay, over here, basically see how we can describe a signal by an equation. Okay, so on the next slide, I will elaborate a little bit more how we can use equation to describe a signal. Let's take a look on this diagram here. This diagram shows the 3D view of a signal. Okay, basically, you can see that the signal change with time, frequency, and also the amplitude. Okay, based on the different view, we actually have different dominate factor. Okay, for example, when we look at this view here, which is time versus amplitude, okay, this is what we call time domain. At this view, we can see how does a signal change with time. While at the another angle here, basically we are looking at frequency versus the power or amplitude. This is what we call a frequency domain. Okay, in frequency domain, what we see is basically a signal is constructed by how many frequency components. Okay, for example, in this case here, we can see that there are three frequency components that make up this signal. So basically, frequency domain actually provides another view regards on the signal. Let's start off by discuss on the equation first. A sinusoidal signal, for example, a very voltage signal can be represented in terms of a sine or cosine term. This is what it means. So on the left hand side, it's basically described a signal by using the sine term. But on your right, basically describe a signal by using the cosine term. Okay, later on, on the next video, I'm going to explain to you on the difference between these two. But over here, you can see that I basically highlight three important parameters. So these three parameters actually define how does a signal change. Okay, for example, okay, V peak is actually the peak amplitude in voltage. The F over here basically stands for the frequency in hertz, while this beta here is basically the phase shift in degree or maybe sometime in terms of gradient. So over here, basically you can see that how does a signal change according to time. Okay, for example, at different time interval, okay, we can have different amplitude. Okay, most of the time the frequency is remain intact and we can also have some phase different. So over this equation, we can see that how does the voltage change according to time, in short. Next, let's talk about time domain. Okay, this display show how does the signal amplitude change with time. Let's take a look on this time domain diagram here. From this diagram, I can actually see how does the amplitude change with time. Can you see over here? At different time interval, okay, the voltage actually varies. So this is what it means. How does a signal change with time? The display of a signal always has the x-axis as time, okay, which means that the x-axis is always time, 
when we talk about time domain. Okay, an instrument that displays a signal in the time domain is the oscillator scope. Okay, so this equipment oscillator scope is used to show how does a signal change with time. Okay, which means that they basically display a time domain. Okay, so basically this is roughly what is about time domain. Next, let's touch on frequency domain. Okay, in frequency domain, they basically display the frequency component that make up the signal. Okay, for example, in this frequency domain here, we can see that this signal is made up of three frequency components, 100 hertz, 200 hertz, and 300 kilohertz. Okay, the band amplitude is also mentioned here. Okay, so basically you can see that 100 hertz is basically the main frequency component in this signal, followed by 200 hertz and 300 hertz. So basically this is what we mean by looking at the frequency component, we can see which is the most significant component that generate this signal. The display of the signal always has an x-axis as frequency, okay, which means that this x-axis for frequency domain is always frequency. It shows the amplitude of each of the frequency component that make up the complex signal. Okay, like what I mentioned here, Okay, so this is basically show the amplitude of each of the frequency components that make up the complex signal. Okay, complex means that there are more than one frequency component. Okay, when there are more than one frequency component, we call this complex signal. By just looking at the amplitude of each of the frequency component, okay, we can clearly see the frequency components that are significant in making up the signal. Okay, imagine this. Basically, some of the other frequency they are probably in lower amplitude, hence they can be neglected. Over this frequency domain, basically for this particular signal, it mainly make up of three frequency components. Okay, so this is what you want to say in this paragraph here. Okay, an instrument that display a signal in the frequency domain is the spectrum analyzer. Okay, so spectrum analyzer actually show the signal in terms of frequency domain. Okay, for example, you just imagine why we need to have frequency domain. Okay, imagine you are in this particular room. Okay, for example, your teacher tells you, okay, can you do a very quick measurement? Okay, who is actually transmitting in this room? So you can't really see who is transmitting in this room in a time domain, but in frequency domain, basically you can clearly see who is transmitting at what frequency and also on at how much amplitude over here or so. So basically this is the use case why we want to use frequency domain to describe and signal. Okay, so this is what I want to do a very quick conclusion. We will come to this in more detail at the last page here. Okay, as what I mentioned early on, a signal basically they can break into two paths. Either they are periodic or a periodic, or also we call it non periodic. Okay, for periodic means that they actually have a pattern. Okay, so once the pattern generates, they basically will repeat the pattern again and again. Okay, for example, we have this sine wave, we have the square wave or triangular wave. Basically, they have a period. Okay, once after the period, they basically repeat it again and again. Okay, so as for non periodic, basically it's a random signal. For example, my voice here, basically it's a random signal. Basically, I can't predict how does the signal change with time. So hence, therefore with this, actually, therefore this is called a non periodic Under periodics, in fact, they will be under simple and complex. Okay, simple like what I mentioned early on, basically consists of just one frequency component. As for complex, basically consists of more than one frequency component. Okay, again, like what I mentioned, okay, we are going to revisit this at the last slide. Okay, so let's quickly go through what is periodic and non-periodic. Periodic signal. Okay, a periodic signal that will repeat itself after a certain time interval known as the period. Okay, so after this period, okay, the signal actually repeat itself again and again. Basically, the pattern will be keep on repeating. Okay, so this is the meaning of periodic signal. 
which means that this signal will be a continuous signal. They go on and on and on. Basically, what you need to do is basically once you know the period, okay, the signal will be copied from left all the way to the right. So this is the meaning of periodic signal. Okay, some example of periodic signal is the sinus, sinus wave. Okay, if we know the variance of the signal for one period, we will know how the signal will be like at any other time from here. Okay, so this is what I mean. So once you know the sine wave, for example, okay, the sine wave is going to repeat again and again. So as long as you know one period, okay, we will be able to anticipate how does the signal actually will look like at another time okay, thereafter. Okay, the period of a sine wave okay, is actually described by this equation, okay, which I think at this moment now, okay, you don't have any issue to define what is the period of a sine wave, for example. A square wave and a triangular wave, okay, they are basically make up of many, many frequency components. Okay, so basically, this is what it mean. The square wave and triangular wave are not made up of just one frequency. They consist of many frequency components to make up the square wave and also the triangular wave. Okay, such signals are called complex signals. Okay, like what I mentioned, okay, for me, as long as there's one more than one frequency component, I classify this as a complex signal. Okay, nevertheless, they are still known as periodic signal as the signal repeats itself after the period. Okay, so this is what it means by periodic signal. Okay, let's do a quick summarize regards on the periodic signal. Okay, like what I told you, this is actually a sine wave. Basically, a sine wave is made up of just one frequency component. Hence, this is called a simple periodic signal. Okay, for this case here, it's actually a square wave. Okay, a square wave is basically made up of many, many sine waves. Hence, anything made up of more than one frequency component, we call this a complex periodic signal. Same as this triangular wave, basically they consist of many, many sine waves. And because it is more than one frequency component, hence we call this as complex periodic signal. Let's quickly go through this a periodic or non periodic signal. Okay, firstly, the signal never repeats itself. Okay, since the signal is random, as it mentioned over here, okay, so a periodic signal or non periodic signal, they are basically random, okay, which means that we cannot predict, we can't say how does the signal will look like later on. Okay, for example, now you cannot decide whether I will be shouting louder or will I dim my voice so-called lower. Okay, so basically for this kind of voice, for example, okay, which is random in nature, there's no way that we can predict. Okay, so therefore this is what we call a non-biotic signal. Okay, most of the signal in real life are a periodic or non-biotic signal. Okay, like what I mentioned, for example, our voice. Okay, the figure below shows an example of an a periodic or non-biotic signal. Okay, so from here you can see that Basically, there is no period. Okay, we can't see any trend. Okay, you can see that basically they are totally random signal. I can't really predict how does the signal change over time. So therefore, this kind of waveform we classify them as non-periodic signal. Okay, so this is what I have owned it to you early on. I have described to you how does the signal break into periodic and also non-periodic. Okay, so over periodic basically also break into simple and complex. Simple basically consists of, for example, a sine wave consists of just only one frequency component. As for square wave and triangular wave, basically they make up of more than one frequency component. Hence, they are actually classified as complex signal. Okay, so on the right-hand side, okay, which is non-periodic, okay, I have shown you this graph. Basically, it's like, for example, my voice, there is no trend or there is no way that you can predict how does the signal look like and therefore for this kind of signal we actually lump them as non-periodic or a periodic signal okay with this i'd like to end my discussion please help to like and subscribe thank you so much